This is one of the hardest non-calc GCSE further mathematics question <laughs> you're going to get asked, isn't it? So, what? Triangles. Most likely, sine rule, cosine rule, they're also talking about the area. So we've got this triangle, ABC, here are the lengths, we've got an angle of 60 degrees, given that the area is 7 root 3 centimeters squared, find the value of X and Y. Okay, so what should you be thinking about straight away? When they're telling me to find X and Y, two variables, I'm thinking about simultaneous equations. I'm thinking that I need to somehow find two different equations, solve them simultaneously to find X and Y. Now, how are we going to get the first equation? This is exam technique. Always start off with the given statement. Given statements basically tell you, start here, X marks the spot. So, the area of a non-right angled triangle is a half AB sine C, okay? They're telling us that that area is seven root three, is a half, then you have, so first locate the angle you're gonna be using is obviously 60 degrees then your A's and B's are the lengths on either side. So we have X, Y. You don't even really need the brackets when we're dealing with algebra. Sine of the angle 60 degrees. And this is where we're gonna get a mark for knowing what sine of 60 is, all right? Now I'm gonna be cheeky here. I mean, I could do it after, but I'm gonna times both sides by two, just because I don't like this. I mean, sine 60 is root three over two. That would combine with that to make it over four. You could times by four. I just, just don't like having that 2 there. So I have 14 root 3 is xy times sine 60, which is root 3 over 2. I'm going to times through by 2, but also the root 3s cancel. Yeah, now you can write divide both sides by root 3, but you don't have to. I'm just going to cross them off, but remember that's still a half. Times both sides by 2, we get 28 is xy. And there's going to be a tricky simultaneous equations. It's looking like it's going to be one of those quadratic ones. Now, that's our first equation. Where are we going to get our second one? Well, in this non-right angle triangle, they have given us three lengths and an angle. What should we be thinking about? The cosine rule, okay? So what is the cosine rule? A squared is B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A, all right? And this is kind of why I don't like saying A is this, B is this, and putting on the diagram because depending on which formula we're using, you know, the A's and B's change all the time, all right? Now, when it comes to the cosine rule, you identify your angle and the letter in question is always opposite that. So that means that this is your angle A and this is your lowercase a, all right? Now, I'll put it in here just for you guys. When we take that and put it into here, we need to square it, right? Root of 37 squared is just 37. Is b squared plus c squared, so that's x squared plus y squared minus 2 bc cos a. bc cos a. Now, cos of 60 is 1 half. A half cancels the 2. Boom. Now, what else do you notice? XY is 28. XY is 28. So I have 37 is X squared plus Y squared minus, what was it? 28. Move to the other side. So we're left with our second equation is X squared plus Y squared is uh, 65. <laughs> Okay, Ayo, I'm not risking it. That's 15, uh, yeah, 65. Okay, cool, sweating. Now, even though we replace that with this, that isn't really the simultaneous equations. I mean, we could have left it as x, y, and then subbed in again, but now we have to do our simultaneous equations. So, you want to rearrange for either x or y and substitute. Yeah, and it's going to be easier to do it in this one. Okay, we call that the subject equation. I'll call it number three. This is rearranged for y. y is 28 over x. Okay, the reason we call it the subject equation is once we work out x, we can sew it back in, work out y straight away. Alrighty then. 
So the reason that happened is um, this is x times y. So to reach y, we divide by x. Sub that into here. We get x squared plus y squared. So when we square this, we're going to get 28 squared over x squared equals 65. All right. Now, forget about what 28 squared is for a second. In fact, this probably would actually be a calculator paper, but because that 28 squared. But the main part of this is how do we even solve this? Okay. Now, this is looking like uh, aquatic because if we times everything by x squared, this is going to turn into x power 4, right? That's not good. However, if I just notice that there's x squared common, I could let u equal x squared. And when I do that, it's actually just a quadratic. Uh, sorry, it's not u squared, it's just u. But when I times through by u, it will become that. So times through by u squared, what am I on about? Times through by u, that becomes u squared plus 28 squared is 65u. Okay, and now we need to move that 65u to the other side, and we probably want to work out what the 28 squared is. Okay, so uh, we have u squared uh, minus 65u plus 28 squared. And to be honest, I'm thinking if this was an on calculator and with 28, we're going to have to list out the factors, right? Uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, another way you could do it is you could rewrite 28 in terms of its prime factors. So it's what? 4 times 7. So 2, 2, 7. So it'd be 2 squared, 2 squared, 7 squared, right? Because, yeah, 28 is 4 times 7. And then 4 is 2 times 2, but then you have to square that, right? So you're looking at the combinations which could give you 65. Interesting. Now, because this is plus, these have to be the same sign. Because that's minus, they're both going to have to be minus. So we're looking at numbers large enough that could possibly subtract to make 65. Now, I'm kind of thinking about uh, this, you know, 4 squared. So that's 4 squared, isn't it? Uh, and that is 7 squared. Does that work? 16 and 49. That works. Yeah. These two multiplied together. Nice. See, sometimes there's trick to this. So it is non-calc. I was just being feeling a bit lazy for a second. Uh, what's that? Uh, 16. Yeah, this is going to be 2 squared times 2 squared is 16. And 7 squared, 49. That works. It's looking good. So u is 16. And u is 49. Now, we're not done yet, right? Because remember, u, we let it be x squared. So, just so I don't have to write a whole new line, I'm going to let that be x squared. And let that be x squared. Now we know that x is positive, okay? So x is positive, so x is going to be 4, x is going to be 7. Which is great, because now y, this works out perfectly, y is 28 divided by 4, which is 7, and this would give you y is 4, okay? So uh, that's basically it, it's in no particular order, yeah? Don't really need to write this down, but in no particular order, x is 4, y is 7. Yeah, because they're just sides, you know, this interchangeable, right, in terms of if I wrote y here and x here, it wouldn't really have made a difference, okay? So your solution is x is 4, y is 7, and vice versa. So this is a beautiful 8 mark question, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe for more content like this, and uh, I guess... I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice.